what you learn about drawing the figure is the more you distort the figure, the more energy it has. And the figure has subtle distortions built into it. Things left out, uh, a, a kind of uh, freewheeling, uh, improvised look to the paintings. The, the paintings that we have in the show are interesting to me because they stand apart, uh, at least for me, from what I know from your other work. And so maybe you can start to talk about a little bit about that. Well, the reason they're different, uh, for one thing, is that they're improvised paintings. And they're based on drawing and they're based on uh, expressionism, which is sure. how I began as an art student, being interested in especially abstract expressionism. And the older I got, I never lost touch with the, the power of expressionist art. And in my teaching, it was something I, I relied on uh, to the students to, to give problems that allowed them to express their, uh, their emotional lives. Uh, I generally begin with a subtle palette and then w work the painting, but I really can't say, I have no memory of yeah. why. All I know is at some point in the painting, I had something that felt alive to me and I stopped. I didn't think there was anything more I could do that would make the painting more real to me or the emotion that I was sensing up there was uh, would be any more intense. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've, I've let Louisiana in in terms of, of what, what, what it's been about. But my first exposure in New Orleans was with abstract paintings that I deliberately made to aggravate uh, <laughs> the climate in really? New Orleans. Because New Orleans was a backwater. My yeah. first shows in New Orleans were in the 60s. And uh, abstract painting was, was considered, uh, you know, Beyond the pale. So were these the were these the kind of like hard edge geometric? Yeah, yeah. Very, as severe as I could make them. And uh, so uh, I was very pleased to get a rough reception in New Orleans. But I had a dealer down there, Simone Stern, who uh, loved the fact that uh, she could show art that kind of rubbed people the wrong way. In New yeah. Orleans. So, yeah. That, uh, That's that kind of surprising to me because you know you don't really associate New Orleans these days with being easily no, wrapped up had, by the world. It has everything, it has everything down there. But I was young and it was a pleasure to, uh, to kind of um, go against the grain. And I think it's true of a lot of young artists that they get noticed because they, they uh, approach, approach their art that way. You get, it's a way to get noticed. And it also is very satisfying to me. Sure. I thought I was bringing a message of modern art to Louisiana and mm -hmm. The students just ate it up. Let me tell yeah. you, it, it was wonderful to have uh, the response to modernism in the art school, mm -hmm. and uh, and the kind of artists that we brought down over the years too to uh, expose the students to uh, to a bigger world, to a, uh, a more exciting world. This is uh, another guardian angel painting, but it has a title, and it's called for John Griffith, and John Griffith. Uh, is not an imaginary person. He was one of the first modern art dealers in Baton Rouge who opened up the, uh, the scene for a young artists to uh, sell work to corporations and banks and so on. He, he really opened up uh, the, the whole notion of that. This painting is a memory painting. There, there's a smaller version. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to photograph it or not. Mm -hmm. The smaller study <coughs> has to do with uh, visiting John after he got very sick. John got HIV. So uh, a week or so later, we got word that John had passed away. Mm -hmm. And I immediately made a memory painting of him, a small study uh, of, uh, of, of this event. And then, uh, so when you say memory painting, you mean just like s taking images like straight from your memory and just well, putting them there, straight there, on? There, the there is something, uh, there, there is so something that about art education. We generally train uh, students to paint from life or to paint from your memory. Yeah. That, for example, uh, a successful um, artist ought to be able to paint from, draw a figure from memory or draw from observation. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was the first time in my life where this principle was really challenged. I was challenged by it because this was somebody I knew who I was no longer there to be, uh, to be painted from life. 